Hey, it is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on the concept and experience of narcissistic triangulation. What happens when a narcissist introduces a third party into your relationship? You know, a, a third wheel, a second hub, um, something that throws things out of whack, out of balance. It makes things unstable. One of the hallmark, I would say, traits or um, experiences in a narcissistic relationship is this tendency for it to become chaotic and unstable. Um, chaotic meaning, you know, they leave you, you know, sort of cliff hanging, um, you know, hanging over a cliff, um, out of fear, intimidation, surprise, um, feeling like you really have the short end of the stick, literally and figuratively, like they're just all of a sudden stirring up the pot and they're making big waves and you just have an empty straw. I mean, it, it's set up as a manipulation when we talk about triangulation. It is so that they can vie for and get your attention, but not in a typical positive way, but more in sort of a sardonic, caustic, um, negative way. And caustic is kind of an interesting word. It just sort of means, it's kind of a, a term that I re refer to, to this very precise and specific type of dynamic and energy, which is sort of very flammable and very hurtful. It feels almost like, you know, an inflamed, a rage, um, a sting. You know, this is not a cold stone wall. This might feel that it has a lot of sort of hatred or passion um, behind it, you know, a very inflamed anger. Um, and they might, you know, create, you know, a adultery situations. Um, you know, ghosting situations where they cease communication, um, you know, sort of leaving you on edge all the time, just sort of wondering what comes next. So they might sort of pop the news on you, the news that they're moving, that they're in a different job, that they've taken on a new career. Um, they've just, you know, you, you know, this big life change that they sort of pop on you. And hitherto, you were sort of, you know, maybe kept each other in the loop or maybe even made some like mutual decisions and all of a sudden you find you're not consulted, you're not communicated with, you are not connected to. All of a sudden, it's like you're only connected on two of the eight cylinders. The relationship ain't where it's supposed to be. All of a sudden, things are dropping off. Calls are dropping off. Really, you know, um, get togethers are dropping off and it just sort of lose some steam or things begin to change really, you know, especially on their end, but you can usually feel it coming. It's kind of like, you know, you know something, you're on the brink of something changing. And, you know, it can be very intense when you talk about um, triangulation. It can involve very intense sort of idealization of somebody uh, right away, similar to a love bombing. So they might begin like love bombing a third party talking them up. They're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And this might be an individual. It might be a house that they're talking up, but it's usually an individual or a third party that throws things so that you will, you know, then have to kind of give them attention in, in a very negative and oftentimes very uncomfortable manner. Um, and the, you know, intense, you know, uh, and so, and, you know, it's, you, you get sort of extremes with them. Sometimes even when you talk about triangulation, the narcissist um, or covert narcissist can go into sort of splitting philosophy or splitting behavior where they see things all of a sudden, everything was very rosy. All of a sudden it's very dark. It's not, it's not on. It's, you know, it was either yes, now it's completely no. So you see these extremes of changes of heart or changes of emotion. Their thought patterns, you know, all of a sudden, you know, they were everything was a go and then all of a sudden everything is not a go. They don't leave it open for discussion, you know. Um, you know, they don't, you know, say, they don't sort of um, introduce it gently, you know, that this and this might be happening. There's no shades of gray. It's just all of a sudden a, a flip, it, a switch is flipped and this can involve a third pardon per, per, uh, person or a third party 
where this becomes a new love bombing, which again is going to go through the phases of devaluing and discard, but you're just observing for this, you know, other individual, you know, you can feel sorry for them, you can feel worried, you can feel empathy, but know that they are set up for the same journey that you have been on. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. These individuals don't lose their stripes. They don't lose their dots. They just are, they're very oftentimes resistant to change and their behavior becomes more pronounced, I would say, with time. I mean, it really becomes more distinct, you know, less subtle, um, less passive, um, and more apparent. You know, you see these little blurps of them on the radar, you know, where they, you know, are getting this attention and then through tri triangulation and it's to elicit a fear of loss or abandonment or guilt or, you know, just some sort of betrayal in the relationship. Um, oftentimes it can be one of humiliation where they use this third party to say, oh, well, look, they did it right. And they're the perfect whatever or the perfect business partner, the perfect spouse, um, the perfect sibling. So it can be, you know, any sort of individual. It doesn't only have to be romantic to elicit this uneasiness in this vying for attention. In other words, it's really on that precipice. Things become very unstable. Things waffle and wobble a lot when you're in this triangulation. And oftentimes it's very heated or very cold, very intense on either end of the spectrum. Very difficult to manage when you've got triangulation and splitting, which means all of a sudden they go either very, very negative on you or very positive in another direction or completely, you know, radical, and then you're just all of a sudden like, this is, I didn't see this coming, and they're doing a complete U-turn or a 180 or a 360, whatever it is you want to call it. You're just in a state of shock, and it, what's been leading up to it, I mean, just usually doesn't equal the degree of relationship or rage, you know, relationship rage or behavior that you experience. So it's usually sort of drastic, um, Again, you know, the narcissist, you're dealing with someone who has this sort of entitlement, sort of grandiosity and pathological sense of self-importance. So if they feel that they have to peacock up something, then they will, not in a positive way, you know, in a communication way, but in a negative way. Well, they'll just sort of ghost you out, not communicate, um, leave you, you know, hanging um, for days and weeks, you know, wondering where they are or his things are still things uh, things still on, so they'll sort of you know things will be very vague, um, and it 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 becomes very um it, it'll elicit especially very strong negative emotions from the other. I think that's the part, and it's part of kind of like I always see the third party in triangulation. It's kind of like a shield. The third party is kind of like a shield that they can put out, like you know is a decoy for them to protect them. It's a defense mechanism. And, you know, narcissists do this in, and they do things in relationships that most, and they take it to levels that most people would not. Um, you know, they either with age or um, with events, you know, um, you know, you don't need to bring somebody to this event and then they're always bringing somebody, you know, they're, they want to seem like they've always got somebody and they've, you know, can then shut, you know, shortcut <laughs> the event. Um, you know, so they've got this other person, you know, so they can triangulate in, in a number of different ways. They can kind of use it as their way to get out of things. <clears throat> and, you know, you'll feel very cold and distant when there was, you know, perhaps potential or there was closeness before. Um, and then it just feel, you know, it can create a big divide and a big moat, if you will, that's intraversible, you know, um, between you two emotionally, meaning Oftentimes it can't be hashed out, talked out, discussed. You know, they leave this big gulf um, in part of the triangulation. <clears throat> it's like a big wedge. They just throw this in there. And of course, as you might know from the arts, you know, um, the triangle is one of the most dynamic, um, unstable um, shapes in nature. You know, so you, you talk about, you know, um, a square being very stable, you know, um, and a circle, I think, being very you know, um, consistent and, and, um, you know, energy in, in a specific, you know, direction, the, the triangle is one of the more unstable and sort of, um, <clears throat> dynamic, sh you know, um, 
shapes. And so it can oftentimes feel very unsettling and, 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 and it is, I mean, it's intended to be unsettling and, but you can't take it personally. Um, it's to understand that this is just how they put a wrench in things. Um, they, they do this to, you know, to put a wrench, it's a defense mechanism, very much like the way a cactus has a pricker. It's to protect themselves. It's so that they can get what they want so that they can survive. Once again, for a, a, you know, a psychopath who has no conscience, I mean, they'll just go to whatever lengths to get whatever it is that they want. They don't care who they triangulate or shame. They don't care if they do it publicly. I mean, most people would have a little bit of sensitivity, you know, and not do certain things, a certain degree of decorum, etiquette, um, courtesy, common courtesy, common sense. The narcissist seems to feel that they are exclusive, that they don't need to exercise common sense. They don't need to exercise common courtesy. They don't need to play by the rules. They don't need to um, follow anyone else's terms. They're just sort of on this grandiose, you know, this is power for them. This is how they fuel their life. This is basically fuel for, for them. This is what they do. And it gets more and more, um, I guess, you know, um, pronounced with, with time, or you might see and experience some of these that become more painful with time. And, um, you know, it will, it, you know, it, it'll, it'll create just sort of a, a triggering situation, especially if you don't resolve it. So you need to understand, you know, because this really hurts people. It really knocks them behind the knees. You know, it really takes them down to a, an emotional stoop level. I mean, where it can become very, they can become very sick. Um, very, um, you know, feel a, a sort of a shock, um, post-traumatic stress syndrome, like unable to function, like it be, can become very severe and it can create this sort of extreme in others, which means they then perceive things then as all bad and then they don't see usually the good in things <clears throat> the way that they usually do or they can't process. So oftentimes for part of the healing, you need to be able to get back on track and see you know the shades of gray and understand why this is and understand that it's it's not your fault um and not to take it personally and um and, and not to take it um literally just know that it is meant to um create a you know um a, a mischief it, it's meant to create a dynamic so that everything can be deflected from them so that they are just getting off the hook um and really it conceals oftentimes their their innate desire um which oftentimes they're too afraid to, you know to um too ashamed to admit you know um you know uh, the narcissist who um you know wants their their mommy to take care of them <laughs> you know the narcissist who wants their daddy to take care of them they can't hold it up in a relationship they have entitlement they think that everybody should pay their way in life um everybody should uh, give them this, give them that. They should inherit this, inherit that. Um, if you're dealing with these people who have, um, you know, affluency, um, become very cold um, and um, very, um, you know, very callous. Um, but the, the chaos is part of this sort of, you know, um, what is part of the, you know, um, intensity with, with the triangulation is it creates a chaos, which means th there is no order. There is no um, process around the stone wall. So you can become, you can feel very blocked and stuck, but that's when you need to back it up uh, emotionally and go, okay, wow. So this is what they do. They're, they're so ineffective at communicating that they have to use this decoy. I mean, this is the extent of their disability. I mean, you have to understand and see it for what it is rather than seeing it, um, you know, for uh, the pretense that they put out there. I mean, you have to be able to see through some things and, you know, and understand and process it for what it is. And, you know, do you want to wait around for 10 or 15 years and see how that plays out and see how a triangle ends up for that person and then the next person and then the next person, you know, or is this taking up a lot and, you know, robbing you of your joy and your happiness and you're sort of being settled and feeling like you belong because I think a lot of the triangulation is like the old elbow like out like you don't belong when you do like it's the old you know and then gets you knocked off center so you can't think straight and it gives them buying time to do whatever it is that they want to do 
you know, steal the clients, you know, do to do whatever it is you find yourself in this triangle. There's usually something that they are going after um, when, you know, they're going into the devalue and discard stage that they are, you know, but then it doesn't mean that they're not going to come back so they can keep this triangulation going on for very long, a long period of time. So, you know, keep out of that. I would say, you know, don't step into the boxing ring. Do not become an energetic match to their force. Do not become a counter force to that force. Do, do not just completely let it drop. Like if someone were to, you know, you know, it would just let, let, let it drop like a, a bag of sand. Just whoop, you know, I'm not entertaining. I'm not, you know, part of this, this three. I'm not part of this three. No, thank you. Like, you know, when they're triangulating you or even they can do it either um, by either the relationship or even constantly talking up somebody, you know, they're bringing it in to create a jealousy or a rage so that you can then elicit and then make a blunder and then they're to say, oh, look, you, you, you're, you made it this blunder. You, you know, freaked out. You're on, you know, it's a way for them to set up a projection. It's just, it's like a trap. It literally is like an emotional trap. So don't enter into the trap. You have to be able to see that triangle trap held up by that one peg for what it is. And when you walk into it, then that one peg drops and then you're in the cage. It's like, and then you can't get out. You know, it's, you, you know, it's like you have to build a better mouse trap. Like you have to say, nope, I've got, you know, this little mouse trap detector. I'm not, go I'm not walking into that little mouse trap. I ain't an emotional mouse. You know, that ain't me. I'm not identifying with that victim here. You might feel hurt. Oh yeah, you're a human. I mean, this is normal, this is natural, and I'm sorry that you have to experience this, but you have to be able to see it for what it is and then back it up so you don't continue to inflict, inflict, because then, you know, this very caustic energy is the way I describe it, is then hurtful and it leaves a sting and you don't want to continue to expose yourself. So really um, learn to perceive it for the tactic that it is and don't be made played by that. Don't be made a fool or naive, or you might do a lot of growing during this period of time. A lot of personal growth um, is to be had for you during this period of time to strengthen you for your future because these lessons, um, I think, will come in very handy for you in life. If you experience this. You'll understand how some things are thrown off and your personal experience, not only being able to identify it in you, but seeing how it is deployed on others and how not to be um, caught up, not to be ensnared, not to be hurt, you know, how to see and handle and manage, you know, where, you know, what would, I mean, you're, you still have feelings, yes, but, you know, you have to be careful because there's a big deep end if you once you get into it, you know, and so do you really want to find yourself in the deep end or do you want to say, um, you know, while I've got the choice right now, um, you know, thanks, but no thanks, you know, to what degree, you know, you can always go out, you know, as they say, you can always go out in the deep end later. Why don't you just stay a little bit close to shore so you can like wade through and get some footing and get grounded on this first, rather than giving yourself the payoff of giving them the narcissist rage and maybe even becoming, you know, um, a lot of that, you know, feeling that, that victim energy and being violated, step up and say, no, nope, I'm not, you know, I'm entering into that right now and, and speak that and make that a deliberate and conscious, um, declaration because then you'll be giving yourself a command. And so you might need to re repeat that command to yourself for seven, tens or dozens or hundreds or thousands of times till you, it really sinks in till it really, I mean, it really in alliance with all of your energy and your chakra and your body, mind, and spirit till everything becomes in sync. And then you're able to breathe, you know, um, normally your heart isn't racing, your appetite isn't thrown off, your sleep isn't thrown off. You know, you're not made chemically out of balance because of this elicitation, because you can have a chemical imbalance created off of this. This is not just like oh, there's this third party. It's like, no, there is a triangulation going on right now. I mean, this, you need to be able to identify, learn,
process and then handle. And we'll, we'll do more uh, discussions on this. I think it's very helpful. If this is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support. Peace out, peace in, and have a beautiful day. Peace be with you.